With Election Day just days away, we want to get a final look at how the U.S. Senate race is shaping up. And we are joined by former Democratic State Representative Lorraine Birabil of Dallas and Republican and former Texas Railroad Commissioner and former Texas Education Agency Commissioner Michael Williams. Our thanks to you both. So let's start and talk about the Senate race. And, you know, there's been a lot of discussion as to why Senator Ted Cruz, the Republican incumbent, has trailed former President Donald Trump in the polls in Texas, with Trump leading by seven percentage points in the real clear politics average of polls, while Cruz leads by four percentage points. So, Michael, what do you think of that? I think a large part of that is just sort of the attractiveness that, that President Trump has to the base of the Republican Party. It's a little bit different than, than what Senator Cruz has, but at the end of the day, they'll both be just fine. Lorraine. Well, of course, I'm going to beg to differ. Um, I think one, I think we could both agree that the likability is a lot different for Ted Cruz than it is for uh, former President Trump in the state of Texas, at least. Um, I think also, I think Texans are in a place where we want solutions, right? We don't want someone who's just going to continue to browbeat and continue to push failed policies. And so we have someone who is uh, solution oriented and, and Colin Allred. And what do you make of the chances? A lot of people have asked, does does Congress and Allred have a shot? at this, a real legitimate shot. Oh, absolutely. Um, statewide, um, you know, Democrats have really been sort of chipping away um, at that um, state, at, at a statewide um, top of the ticket position. We've seen very close races, obviously, when Beto ran a few years ago. But even after that, some of the, uh, for example, the AG's race was very close. So some of these um, top of the ticket races have been close as have been close for some Democrats, and I definitely think that Colin Allred is very well positioned to break through. Michael. You know, I've said this a number of times on this show. A Democrat hasn't won a statewide race in Texas since in 30 years, hasn't won a U.S. Senate race since 1988 when Lloyd Benson did so. Colin Allred presents himself as a bipartisan candidate. However, his record is very, very different from that. His record is that he's voted with Nancy Pelosi. He's voted with Harris Biden over the course of his congressional career. He's wrong on the border. He's wrong on boys and girls teams, on girls teams. And he's wrong on the economy. And he's wrong for Texas. And Texans understand that. So let me ask you, because if you've been following this campaign very closely, you've seen a lot of commercials, and one of the main central themes of Congressman Allred's campaign has been abortion rights, reproductive rights. And when you look at the polls consistently, the con top concerns among Texans have been the economy and inflation and border security. Do you think this was a, a gamble on the congressman's part to, to really bank on this, on this issue of reproductive rights and abortion rights in Texas. And I ask you that first, Lorraine. Yeah, I don't think it's a gamble at all. I think that the fact of the matter is we are an election on an inflection point in our country where we are very close to making a historic decision as a country. And when we bring back uh, that to our state and here in Texas, I think there's a lot of Texas women who look at the failed leadership in Austin, realize that in many ways it has failed not just women, but children um, and all sorts of marginalized communities across Texas when we talk about funding for health care, funding for our public schools. And I think, frankly, Texans are tired of these failed policies and they see a potential solution in Colin Allred. Michael. You know, that is a, the, the, the abortion debate is a debate that I think Texans want to have. And we want to have it, and we appreciate the fact of what the Supreme Court did in Dobbs by returning that decision to Texans. And so that is a, that's an opportunity for us to have that, that conversation. And we're going to have that conversation, and we're having it right now. And so I don't think that, you know, I'm not going to say that that was a risk for the congressman, because that's a legitimate, real, real conversation. But I do think that they're on the wrong side of that issue. And let me ask one last question, and that is, what do you have like a surprise prediction, like any race in Texas that you think is going to surprise everybody? Michael, we'll start with you on that one. No. No? You think everything is, <clears throat> you don't anticipate any surprises. In other words, Democrats holding seats will retain their seats. Republicans holding their seats will retain their seats. I don't see much change in this cycle. I really don't. Mm. Lorraine? 
I think that we will have a surprise. Um, I think there's a lot of uh, data that supports um, the support that Colin Allred is getting across the state. I think the election is going to be extremely close. And so I don't think that uh, despite the predictions that uh, my friend here may have, um, I think that when you're in striking distance, you're in winning distance. And I definitely think this race is going to be within the margin of error. All right, all right. I, I, I will give her, it will be close. It will be, the, the, the Senate the race. The U.S. Senate sorry. race yeah. will be close. I mean, it was 2.6%, you know. 2018. Uh, 2018. It'll be somewhere in that range uh, this time. It will be close. All right. Michael Williams, Lorraine Birabil, thank you so much. And they are going to be part of our awesome panel on election night, along with UT Arlington political science professor Rebecca Dean. We're going to discuss these results as they come in. And we certainly hope you're going to be joining us on CBS News Texas starting at 7 o'clock. For now, I'm Jack Fink. Thanks for watching.